so my dear viewers today i am going to present a very common and very typical case of nervous disease in front of you that case is basically related to a calf but this disease is also very common in horses as well so first of all i will present a case after presentation of the case i will make a tentative diagnosis on the basis of signs and symptoms and physical examination findings after tentative diagnosis i will briefly describe the differential diagnosis of this case and the pathogenesis as well as treatment plan of this case so moving towards case the case was basically of a calf a calf was presented uh, was presented at the clinic with a chief complaint of prolonged standing off feed constipation and stiff body these four signs were basically the chief complaint of the owner uh, from the chief complaint you came to know that this animal is suffering from stiffness of the body and as well as constipation so stiffness of body indicates that this animal is suffering from some sort of spastic or spasm of the body so when i went for the physical examination of this calf i found out that the behavior of calf was mildly depressed but his gait was very stiff because of uh, spastic paralysis of the body and his posture was very typical which is called a sahos posture in sahos posture basically the four limbs are moved forward and hind limbs are moved backward and the neck is extended because of paralysis of all these things and then body condition was normal skin coat was normal and there was no discharge from the scarf and then i moved towards the physical examination of the scarf first of all i took the vitals of the scarf the vital says that the temperature is slightly higher than normal heart rate is also slightly higher than normal and but respiration rate is slightly less than normal which indicates that animal is suffering from some sort of dyspnea and then uh, when i moved for examining the eye when i examined the eye the third eyelid eyelid was prolapsed as you can see in this picture that third eyelid of that calf was prolapsed and his ears were pricked as you can see in this picture that ears were pricked and they were erect this also indicates that this calf is suffering from some sort of uh, spastic paralysis and then as far as the mouth is concerned the mouth was locked in his position because of paralysis and because of locking of that mouth animal was not able to eat anything or drink anything that's why that animal was suffering from off feed or anorexia and then uh, when i moved towards his neck the neck was also spastic and his neck was extended as you can see in this picture and then finally i moved towards uh, examination of his limbs the four limbs were very spastic and very stiff and was also abducted as you can see in this picture that his limbs are very stiff and they are abducted moving away from the body and his hind limbs were also spastic which are not clearly uh, seen in this picture but they were very spastic and a very typical finding which i found that was his tail his tail was erect and spastic as you can see in this right sided picture that his tail was very stiff and erect and this also indicates that he has some sort of spastic paralysis and finally the most important thing that i found in that calf was unhealed navel there was a wound on his navel uh, that uh, indicates that this wound is a very uh, excellent site for entry of many bacteria i will explain it later that how this wound uh, can lead to the all these signs and then uh, there was a mild dyspnea in that calf cuff was not absent and rest of the physical examination was normal but one important finding was hyperesthesia means this animal was hyper responsive to touch sound and light when i touch this animal during physical examination this animal start convulsions this indicates that this animal is very hyperesthetic to touch and when Uh, i make a noise near the animal animal again start convulsions this also indicates that this animal is also hyperesthetic to voice or sound so this hyperesthesia clearly indicates that this calf is suffering from from some sort of nervous disorder so as far as all the signs that i have uh, explained in this uh, typical case they are related to nervous system like erect ears locked jaw spastic neck spastic limbs erect ears and erect tail as well as hyperesthesia these all signs are related to nervous disorder and what was this nervous disorder that nervous disorder was tetanus why i tentatively diagnosed this uh, calf for tetanus because all the signs that are present in this specific calf were indicative of tetanus 
because sahorse posture is very pathognomonic posture for tetanus and secondly third eyelid prolapse is also very typical sign of tetanus then generalized spastic paralysis the spastic paralysis of the whole body it is also very typical for uh, tetanus and finally there was a navel wound navel wound is basically a very uh, you can say very hot spot for the entry of tetanus bacteria that tetanus bacteria which is clostridium tetani that enters to the navel wound goes into the body and after going into the body it produces some toxins that toxins travel on the nerves and finally reach the spinal cord and after reaching the spinal cord uh, these toxins inhibit the release of inhibitory transmitters basically what happens normally what happens and what happens in tetanus normally there are two types of transmitters in the body one is excitatory transmitter and other one is inhibitory transmitter excitatory transmitters are basically excitatory transmitters are basically responsible for causing the contraction of the muscles and inhibitory transmitters are basically responsible for causing the relaxation of the muscles but when this tetanus bacteria enters into the body through the navel of the calf it start producing some toxins and this toxin is called as tetanospasmin this toxin travels on the nerves and after traveling on the nerves it reaches the spinal cord and when it reaches the spinal cord there is a structure which is called as synapse synapse is basically a junction between the two neurons this uh, this toxin binds at the level of synapse and inhibits the release or action of inhibitory transmitters when this uh, this toxin which is called as tetanospasmin this toxin when it inhibits the function of inhibitory transmitters the muscles will not be able to relax they will remain contracted and this continuous contraction causes spastic paralysis in the animal so this is brief pathogenesis of tetanus that how it causes spastic paralysis of the whole body then moving towards the differential diagnosis of tetanus that from which diseases we have to differentiate uh, tetanus the first one is strychnine poisoning in strychnine poisoning you will not see an elevated temperature or elevated heart rate but you will see some signs of uh, hyperemic conjunctiva vomiting and diarrhea in meningitis you will not see spastic paralysis of the whole body but you will see some so some nervous signs like ophistotonus or some head pressing but you will never see spastic paralysis in meningitis then polioencephalomalacia in polioencephalomalacia again you will not see any higher temperature in the body and you will also not see spastic paralysis but you will see blindness in the polioencephalomalacia and then hypomagnesemia in hypomagnesemia you will found a history of lush green pasture feeding because in lush green pasture there is lack of magnesium and when animal feeds on that pasture uh, he will suffer from hypomagnesemia or grass tetany and finally the last differential of tetanus is botulism in botulism there is again paralysis but that paralysis is not spastic in nature that paralysis is flaccid in nature so this is how you have to differentiate tetanus from botulism botulism causes flaccid paralysis but tetanus causes spastic paralysis so then moving towards the treatment of tetanus that how we have to treat a case of tetanus uh, first of all we have to clean the wound which was present on the navel we have to clean that wound with hydrogen peroxide because hydrogen peroxide is a very rich source of oxygen and clostridium tetani loves to grow in anaerobic condition in the absence of oxygen so whenever we provide hydrogen per peroxide to the wound that hydrogen peroxide basically kill the uh, tetanus bacteria by providing oxygen because oxygen is very lethal for the tetanus bacteria then uh, uh, there are basically five principles of treatment of tetanus. The first principle is eliminate the causative agent. For the elimination of the causative agent, we have to, to provide antibiotic. And the antibiotic of choice for tetanus is penicillin G at the dose rate of 33,000 international unit through an intravenous or intramuscular route. And it should be repeated after 12 to 24 hours of interval. Then the alternative choices of antibiotic for tetanus cases is oxytetracycline and metronidazole. The second principle of tetanus treatment is you have to neutralize the toxin. For neutralizing the toxin, you have to provide anti-tetanus serum that contains antibodies. These antibodies will go into the body and will neutralize the toxin of tetanus that is causing spastic paralysis. And what is the dose rate of that anti-tetanus toxins? You have to provide at the dose rate of 1500 international unit intramuscularly per animal. And then because there is muscle spasm in the body because of tetanus, so you have to provide some muscle relaxing agents like acepromazine and diazepam 
and finally you have to provide some fluid therapy to the animal because animal cannot eat due to tetanus because in tetanus there is a lockcha uh, due to which animal cannot eat or drink that's why you have to provide the uh, you have to provide nutrients through parenteral root in the form of fluid therapy and the fluid therapy of choice for tetanus cases is 25% uh, dextrose or 5% dextro dextrose or you can also provide uh, dns dextrose normal saline and finally when the tetanus cases goes into progression they become very severe then animal can suffer from constipation as well as urine retention why because when this case progresses there is spasm of the muscle of bladder as well there is spasm of rectal muscles when there is spasm of rectal muscles animal will not be able to defecate and he will suffer from constipation and when there is spasm of bladder muscles, animal will not be able to urinate and will suffer from urine retention. So if you see that animal is suffering from urine retention because of tetanus, you have to perform catheterization. And if you see that animal is suffering from constipation, then you have to perform enema of that animal. So this is very brief and very uh, excellent treatment plan for cases of tetanus. So this is all about tetanus. Hope you find this case very helpful while diagnosing any case of tetanus in future. Thank you.